Okay, this is going to be part one of two videos on the alternating series test. And what these things are all about is up until now on almost all of the tests that you've used, like the integral test and the comparison test and so on, they all required the series to be a positive series, which means that all the terms of the series were above the x-axis. So you had it positive. Now, in this one, it's called the alternating series test because suppose you had a series, and what an alternating series is is one in which every other term is either positive or negative. So it switches between positive or negative. And we'll take a look at a couple of examples here in just a second. <laughs> but the rule reads like this. If you have a sequence, a positive sequence, then you can form an alternating sequence by putting a negative 1 to the n power in front of it, and this would become then an alternating sequence. Now, this alternating sequence will converge if these two conditions are met. <clears throat> so we'll come back and talk about the two conditions here in just a second. But before we go on, let's take a quick look kind of graphically at what this alternating series thing is all about. So what I'm going to do, and we'll look at it like this. <clears throat> Suppose we had this. Let's take a look at one of the simplest examples, but it's also one of the most important examples. So what this is, and hopefully you'll recognize <clears throat> that this is a harmonic series. So we've used this several times in the past. So harmonic series. <clears throat> now, if you were to write out these terms, <clears throat> they would look like this. So if I just put them term by term, the first term would be a 1, uh, plus <clears throat> then if n is equal to 2, I'd have 1 half plus 1 third um, plus 1 fourth. And we'll put another term, plus 1 fifth, and so on, and it goes off to infinity. So what that is, that's a positive series because all the terms were positive. Now suppose that I want to get an alternating series. And to start this one, let's go ahead and suppose I started this. I started with a negative 1, and I had a positive 1 half, and every other term changes sign. And I had a negative 1 third, and I had a positive 1 fourth, uh, followed by a negative 1 fifth, and so on. And then plus <clears throat> goes off to infinity. So what would that look up like up here? Now, the basic series is still 1 over n. <clears throat> it's just the fact that it alternates between terms. So to make this thing alternate, the easiest way to do it is to put something, and I like to call this thing a switch. I'm going to put a negative 1 raised to the n power. <clears throat> now, the way it works is this. If you take negative 1 and raise it to an odd power, you'll have a negative 1. If you take negative 1 and raise it to an even power, you'll have a positive 1. So in this case, um, if I want the first term of the series to be negative, <clears throat> then when n is equal to 1, I have negative 1 <clears throat> to the first power, which is a negative 1. Then when n is equal to 2, you'd have negative 1 squared, but negative 1 squared is positive, it would turn back to positive. And so the sequence would look like that. So if you want your series to start with a negative number, we'll take negative 1 to the nth power. Now suppose though, that you wanted this. <laughs> Rather than starting with a negative, suppose you wanted to start with a positive. So we'll put 1, then now the second term is going to be negative. Uh, the third term would be positive, and so on. <clears throat> Minus 1 fourth plus 1 fifth. Now <clears throat> the logic is going to be the same. The idea is <clears throat> you're still going to put a switch in here. That switch is going to be a negative 1. But now you want the first term to be positive. Well, this will be positive when you have an even power. So if you wanted the first term to start with a negative 1, you used n. If you want the first term to start with a positive, you can use either n minus 1 or n plus 1. Now, <clears throat> the way that works, if n is equal to 1, you'd have 1 minus 1, which is 0. That first term would be positive. Then when n is equal to 2, you'd have 2 minus 1, negative, and so on. So again, just remember, when you set up your what I call a switch for an alternating series, uh, if you want the first term to be negative, <clears throat> then start with n. If you want the first term to be positive, <clears throat> then use the power of n minus 1. And that'll show up up here in the original rule. So back here, when you look at this, this could actually be n or n minus 1. Either one of them represents an alternating series. just depends on where you want to start with. Okay, <clears throat> now as far as what these other terms mean, let's take a quick look at what the graph of this stuff looks like. So what I'm going to do, I think, is this, is let's take this original positive series and plot the points of the sequence. So the sequence is 1 over n. <clears throat> so the first term would be 1, oops, down to here. Uh, <clears throat> so 
times 1. Okay, then second term is 1 half, so I'll go to 1 half, and I've got a point right here. <clears throat> third term is 1 third, point right here. Fourth term is 1 fourth, <clears throat> about right here. So if I plot these red points, they would look like this. Now what this means, <clears throat> if you look at it, <clears throat> let's go back to the definition. You want to show that these two conditions are met. Now the first condition says this. You have to show then <clears throat> that the limit is a sub n, uh, as n goes to infinity is equal to zero. What this really says is, <clears throat> are the terms in the sequence approaching zero? And in this case, if you look at these red dots, these red dots are approaching zero, <clears throat> so this would satisfy the first condition. Now let's do this. These are the terms of the sequence, one over n. Let's see what the series would look like. And I think I'll do these in, uh, we'll go to a blue color on this one. So what the series is, is take all the red dots and add them together and see what the series looks like. So. The first term is just 1, you'll have a 1 right there. Now, to get the next term, it goes up 1 half, so I could come over here, go up 1 half, and I could plot the second point. See, that's right here. I'm going to use a little bit bigger. Then I'll add this 1 third. So from this height, come over, go up 1 third, plot that. Now I'm going to add this height onto it. So go over here, go up a fourth, plot that. If I added this little height right here, you always go over and you always go up. But the point here is that because all these red dots are positive, each one of them adds something to the sum. So because of that, if you continue to plotting the dots here, they would actually do something like this. They go on, and from previous work, you guys already know that 1 over n, a harmonic series, um, diverges. And you're familiar with it because of the p-test, because 1 over n to the first power, uh, p is equal to 1, this thing's going to diverge. So if it's just a basic harmonic series, uh, if you add up all the points, they diverge, which means basically they just go on forever and will approach a positive infinity if you went out far enough. Now let's compare that to an alternating what's harmonic series. So if this one is a harmonic series, this one over here is an alternating harmonic series. Let's see what that looks like. So an alternating <coughs> harmonic series. Okay, now these, I think I'll go ahead and plot these in uh, green, just to be a little different here. <clears throat> um, and let's plot this. The first term is a 1. I've got a 1 right there. Now the second term, though, is a negative 1 half. It's below the x-axis. It's about right here. <clears throat> the third term is 1 third, so it's exactly the same thing as this red one was. Now the fourth one is negative, so it goes below. The next one's positive. The next one's negative. <clears throat> positive, negative. So this thing alternates between positive and negative, and it goes on forever. And that's what that sequence looks like. So now let's do the same we did here. If we, in the first one, if we added up the red sequences, we got the blue series. So now let's add up these green sequence points and see what their series looks like. And we'll plot this one just to be different in black. <clears throat> so what happens, the first point is, uh, right there with all of it. So all the first point's always one. Now, when the series was red, you went over and you added each one of them. But in this case, <clears throat> you're going to go over, but rather than going up a half, you're going to go down a half. So you'll go down a half. <clears throat> this is negative, and you'll wind up right here. Now, for the third series, this is positive, so this is going to add. So if I go over here, it's going to go back up, and it'll go right here. So a positive adds, a negative subtracts. Now the next one, this is a negative 4, so if I go over here, now it's going to go down. We're down to right there. Then if I go over again, this next one's positive, it'll go a little bit back up. If I go over, the next one's going to go a little bit back down. And it's kind of hard to see it, but I'll go ahead and put a line in here. It would look something like this. If I started from here and say went all the way over to about right here, um, what you'll see <coughs> is that these points are just going back and forth on either side of this line. So like here, uh, here, here, here. But in this case, the black series is settling in on a limit, and this one converges. So the first interesting thing you'll see on uh, alternating series is that you can have a series that if you just consider the positive series, it diverges. But if you change it into an alternating series, it converges. And that won't be true in every case, but it happens to be true in the case of the harmonic series. 
Okay, so now back to the rule and let's see what we're actually trying to show here. So actually, this is given a series, you want to show, uh, use these two conditions. And what the two conditions say are the following. Um, let's see. So you want to show uh, that the terms of the sequence are approaching zero. Now one possibly confusing point for most students when they look at this is what do you do with this uh, negative one to the n? And I like to think of it like this. The original series was a or sequence was a positive sequence. That's this right here. So this part of it is a sub n. This negative one thing is just the switch that changes the sign on that. So just be aware of the fact when you go down and you try to test these things right here, all you have to test is the positive sequence. You don't even have to worry about the negative one. So we'll just leave that out. So what this one says is, are in the terms of the sequence approaching zero? In other words, does it look like, <clears throat> in this case, the red cases, these red dots were approaching the x-axis, they're approaching zero. And also, if you have the green dots, are also approaching zero. Uh, and again, back to our little ruler. Okay, that's the first part. So the terms of the series of the sequence have to be approaching zero. What the second part says is that pick any term in the sequence, and it has to be less than the previous term, which means basically that the sequence must be decreasing. So you have to show that the series is approaching zero and that the series is decreasing. Now to actually use it, it's very easy to use. Work one example here problem and I'll show you what this thing looks like when you actually work it out. So uh, that problem would look like this. Okay, and what I want to do is this. It's actually the same one we just did. This is the harmonic series, but let's just actually apply the rule and see how it works. Now you don't have to do this, but a habit of mine is to do this. Um, it's always kind of in um, this form right here. Um, I've got negative one and the sequence is a little bit off to the right. So something that I do is I'll just go ahead and rewrite it like this. The summation from n equals one to infinity and I'm going to rewrite it as negative one to the n and rather than divided by n I'm going to move it over and make it be one over n like this. Now the reason I like to do that is that this separates the sequence from the negative one. So just that part of it is actually a sub n. Uh, this is just makes it alternate between positive or negative. So now back to my rules, <clears throat> and <clears throat> it looks like this. I'll, first step is this. I want to show, are the terms of the sequence approaching zero? So in this case, um, this is going to be the first part of the test. I will want to note is the limit as n approaches infinity of a sub n equal to zero. That's a little question mark. So to show that, I'll take the limit. In this case, it's going to be pretty easy. A sub n is 1 over n, and I want to know what's going on as n approaches infinity. And this one's very easy. Uh, as n goes to infinity, you've got a fraction with n in the denominator. As the denominator gets bigger, the entire fraction will go to zero. So this whole thing will go to zero, and what that means is that it passed the first part of the test. We'll put a little check out here. So it passed the first part of the test. So now, since this is true, you can go ahead and do this. Now, if this had been false, <clears throat> you could stop because that just means that the alternating series test doesn't apply. But let's go into the second part. The second part says is any term less than the term in front of it. And what that's going to look like would be this. We'll put this will be the second condition. So you want to know is a sub n plus 1 less than or equal to a sub n. <clears throat> now looking at this, to find n, a sub n is just everywhere you've got an n, replace it with an n plus 1. So this one would be 1 over n plus 1. And you want to know is that less than or equal to <clears throat> the original one, which would be 1 over n. Now is this true? And again, use the same logic that you've used in previous tests. If you have a number divided by n and another same number divided by n plus 1, the denominator on the left is bigger than the denominator on the right. Therefore, since the numerator is the same, if the denominator is bigger, the overall fraction is smaller. So indeed, a sub n plus 1 is less than this, and this is true. So, so it passed the second part of the test. So the first condition is true, the second condition is true, so you can conclude that the original 
whole alternating series. So the original alternating series converges. So again, fairly easy rule to use sometimes. We'll take a look at some examples where it's not quite so easy. So again, to show that it converges, going back to your rule, <coughs> um, given an alternating series, uh, just show that the terms of the sequence are approaching zero <coughs> and that the sequence is decreasing. And it just takes those two steps, <coughs> in this case, uh, fairly easy to apply, and it looks like that. Now in the next video, we'll look at uh, <coughs> some additional examples that are a little trickier.